ferrofluid. It's a mesmerizing material that you can move with magnets. The stuff feels like it has a life of its own and it's just so much fun to play with the little magnet. And what I want to do today is I want to take it, put it in a speaker, and have it dance around to the beat of the music. Just like this. And I want to show you exactly how I made mine. So here's the brains of the build. We're going to start off with this right here, our power strip. It's got some USB charging ports and two outlets and it's got a really nice cord. Next we have our power supply. It takes 120 volts, turns it to 12 volts and 5 amps. It's got a barrel plug on it and it comes with an adapter that you can attach two cords to. This little square right here is a Bluetooth receiver. It takes in a Bluetooth signal and it turns it to a 3.5 millimeter output. And it's also just charged by a USB. Next up, Mr. Magneto. It's a super huge electromagnet. This thing is super heavy. It runs off 12 volts DC and produces 1400 newtons of suction. I also got a strip of LED lights that I want to use to light up the ferrofluid bottle. The Noisemakers. Got a simple set of speakers. They're powered by USB and have a 3.5 millimeter input. The Magnet Control. This is normally used for controlling LED lights to music. It has a 12 volt input. It also has a 3.5 millimeter input as well. And I'm gonna be using this to control my magnet. And this project would be nothing without the ferrofluid itself. Now that we have all our parts, let's go ahead and put it together. We're gonna take our 12 volt power supply. We're gonna remove the little adapter, strip some wires, pinch them in place, and then attach it to our magnet control so we can have some power run into it. Onto the LED lights. I want these to turn on and just be bright white light. I think it would look nice against the ferrofluid. So I go ahead and solder on a little barrel plug adapter, put on some heat shrink tubing, and then we go ahead and test it out with this little power supply and a little potentiometer that you can adjust the brightness of it. And it works perfectly. It produces nice bright white light. Time to start hooking stuff up to the magnet control. The first thing I'm going to add in is a little 3.5 millimeter audio splitter. Then we're going to take our little Bluetooth receiver, we're going to hook it up, plug in the power, and then take the 3.5 millimeter cord and put it to one end of the splitter. We're going to take our noisemakers, we're going to take the 3.5 millimeter and plug it into the other end of the splitter. Then we're going to plug in the USB into the power. I also decided to add a small strip of LED lights to one end of the output, just so we can see what's going on. On the other output of the magnet control, I put three wires in the RGB and I soldered it to the end of the magnet. I put some heat shrink tubing on it, and now we're ready to go. It's about time to test it to see if it works, but I don't want to have to deal with copyright claims or music, so I thought it'd be best if I just produced my own. So after having some fun on the drums, it was time to test out our circuit and see if it even works. You can now see why I added on the small strip of LED lights. It's just so we can visually see what's happening with the magnet because you can't really see a magnet turning on and off. It seems that the lights are dancing with the music, so the next thing is put a piece of plastic over the magnet and sure enough, it's making our ferrofluid dance to the music. I'm just really happy that the LED light controller actually is working for this. I went ahead and tried it without the plastic barrier, and the ferrofluid just looks so cool. I ended up settling on this blue ferrofluid, and I'm happy I did. It just looks like it has a life of its own. Now that we know all the electronics are going to be working, it's time to build ourselves an enclosure for the speaker system. I start off with just a really long piece of wood. I go ahead and measure and cut and start to drill out some holes. And I ended up using this crazy drill bit to cut out a circle. I don't really think it's meant for wood, mostly because it almost caught the wood on fire. But we ended up getting out the hole and I was happy with it. I also drilled out a couple more smaller holes in the front. And these are going to be to let the audio out. And you can see what the front plate's going to look like now. With all the panels cut out and sanded, it was time to build the enclosure box. So I clamped it down and I drilled and screwed it into place. I also drilled out a hole on the back panel at the bottom, just so the power strip could fit through it. And then I went ahead and put the power strip in, slid it through the hole, and then screwed that onto place as well. The last piece of the box was just the roof, so I went ahead and screwed that into place. Then I took some wood filler and filled in a bunch of the screw holes and I sanded it nice and flat. And the final touch was to just take some nice light wood stain and just stain the box all over. And we got our box. I think it's looking really nice. So the first thing is I take off the lid, I flip it over because it's time to put on a couple little felt pads. These are pretty much just going to be there to hold the thing in place and keep it from damaging wherever I set it. Time to install all the components. I ended up taking a bunch of this foam with some adhesive on the back of it. I stuck it on some small pieces of wood, and these are going to be what I used to hold the ferrofluid bottle in place. I then used my hot glue gun and used some high temperature wood glue, and glued it on the little pieces of wood, and just stuck those down. I then take another strip of the foam, and I stick it on the bottom just for extra cushion. I dry fit in the ferrofluid bottle just to see if it fits nice and snug, and I'm super happy with it. 
Now it's time to add some lights. I grabbed the LED light strip and it has an adhesive already on it so I removed the backing and I just go ahead and stick it all around the box. Even though I'm going to be closing the box, I still want the light to be all around it because I think it'll look nice shining through the front two holes as well. And I make sure it runs around the ferrofluid bottle. I then cut off the extra LED light and we got ourselves some light for the box. I then take the ferrofluid and I slide it into place and behind the ferrofluid I take these little sheets of plastic that I cut out from storage container lids. And behind those sheets of plastic, I made this little wooden brace. I go ahead and put some hot wood glue on the bottom of it, and I stick that down nice and solid. And this is what's going to be housing the magnet, and it has the foam on the sides of it, so you can see it just really fits in there super snug. Time for some Velcro tape. I decided to use Velcro tape to stick down a bunch of the components, mostly because it's not super permanent, so if I ever need to change something, swap things, or just move things around, it's just going to be a lot easier for me in the long run. I then took the LED light dimmer, I stuck some double sided tape on it and I stuck it over one of the holes on the front just so you can access it from the outside without having to open it. I then did the same thing for the volume control knob. I really like how it hides the controls over these holes. The last component to stick down is the Bluetooth receiver and then it's time to do a little bit of wire cleanup. I wrap up the wires into bundles as best as I can just to kind of keep down the huge squid of wires to a minimum and I think it looks pretty good for what it is. With all the components in place, it's time to close up the lid, screw it down, and give this thing a nice little test run. Overall, I'm just super happy with the way this thing came out. And it's fun that it came with a little remote that you can use to adjust, I guess, the magnet control. Like if I want to just have it as a solid magnet, have it like that. Or if I want to have it kind of pulse, you can have it pulse to different frequencies. Or you can just put it on the music mode. So whenever you play music, it's just going to go ahead and react to whatever music you're playing. And honestly, it works really well when you're playing music through it. And you got the little volume control right here, got the little light control right here. And it's honestly just a lot of fun to watch the ferro flu just dance around to whatever song you have playing. It's super reflective, super blue, super metallic looking, very alien-like. Kind of reminds me of the movie Terminator where he turns into like molten liquid gallium or, or something like that. Just really cool and it's just such a fun little thing and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you just saw something cool or just had a fun time. Anyways... Thanks for stopping by, everybody, and I'll catch you on the next one.